afternoon and welcome. Please join in our opening hymn, number 451, O God, Almighty Father, number 451. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you shelter us under the shadow of your wings. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, 
Grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, pick out certain men and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our help is from the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred, sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent and equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being. Because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? 
will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here tonight. At first glance, our scripture readings today point us in the direction of praying always with perseverance, with resolve, never giving up. We see that in our first reading when Moses was strong and had his arms lifted up. Then the battle went the way of the Israelites. But when he grew weary and his hands dropped, then the other side was victorious. And of course, the parable of the persevering widow and the unjust judge also seemed to point us in that direction, that if we are persistent in our prayer, steadfast in our prayer, then God will grant us what we ask for in prayer. But the moment when we begin to show weakness and give up, then it won't go our way. I think it's very easy to compare after hearing these readings, or I should say, of thinking of God as someone who grants us our prayers when we pester him, when we sort of harass him, and we kind of become like the widow, persistent in our demands and our requests. But as we've been reflecting and having a conversation on prayer for the past few weeks on Tuesday evenings with a group of parishioners, we've come to see that there is a little more to prayer than just that. Prayer is not a pestering of God for what we believe that we need at this particular moment in time but that prayer is about cultivating and strengthening and fostering a relationship with God. And so we might ask ourselves as a beginning to understand our prayer and our desire to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus by reflecting this week on the following. What is my image of God now? What is my relationship with God like now? How would I describe it? And what role does prayer play in my relationship with God? And how does it impact my uh, image of God. For if we turn to God only in our need or think of God only as someone who is far remote from us, the old man with the big white beard sitting in heaven, then our prayer will be of a particular kind. But if we look at our image of God as a relationship, as someone who desires to have a relationship with us, then I think things change. When we begin to look at God not as just someone who 
decides arbitrarily what a blessing we get or what a blessing he withholds from us, then that really can distract us in our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. So as we seek to grow in our discipleship of the Lord Jesus and to mature as human persons, let us be inspired by today's parable to spend some time this week again reflecting on the questions, what is my image of God now? How do I think of God? How do I perceive of God? Then, what is my relationship with God like now? How would I describe it? And then, what role does prayer play in my life and how I think of God and how I relate to God? I think if we reflect on those questions and come to answer for ourselves what they mean at this moment in our lives, we will begin to welcome and open our hearts to God as God comes to us each day of our lives in the ordinary and the extraordinary events and in the people with whom we encounter, those whom we live with, those whom we pray with here at Mass, those whom we live and work with. For God desires very much to have a relationship with each one of us. So let us take the time to reflect this week on where we are in our relationship with God. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, come to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake is crucified unto Pontius Pilate, to death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In faith we pray. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. 
for Pope Francis that he may always continue to convince and encourage us all to do God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, catechists, and teachers, that they may teach the young by their actions as well as their words, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the times when our faith is weak, that we, we may have the courage and persistence to continue seeking God's will in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For perseverance in sincere prayer on the part of the faithful, asking the Lord of the harvest for holy vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's come for the Benedictine monks of St. Anselm Abbey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's comfort and healing today for those who are sick, whose names are listed on the prayer line, and for our beloved dead, especially those who bore witness to Christ in the midst of their sufferings. We pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. For our own intentions, for these intentions and for our parish family, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear, O oh God, the prayers you have inspired us to ask in faith, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our offertory hymn number 689, Shelter Me, O oh God, number 689. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion hymn number 787, To Be Your Bread, number 787.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn, number 458, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 458.